Hey guys, welcome to another edition. Well, the show that talks about everything that has to do with uh, live video in a professional manner on social media. My name is Stephen Haywood, and as always, I am joined by my partner in crime, Mr. Marty McPadden from Podjam.tv. Welcome, sir. Hello, Stephen. How are you? Ah, uh, you know, I'm doing well. Considering uh, I feel I feel out of the the loop a little bit here because. The last couple of weeks, we've been doing shows on different times, different days. Well, not different times, but different days. And that's, and yep. I f- and now I feel back at home. I feel like Thursday. Yeah, we're 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 riding it. But oh, don't speak too soon. <laughs> next week we're going to be doing the show on Tuesday because I have some prior commitments, and so next Tuesday, um, and I believe it's the twentieth. Everybody, check your calendars at two p.m. Eastern time myself, Jeff, and Marty are going to be back, and we're going to be spending the whole show talking to a gentleman that sent in a video that's going to be doing some live broadcasts uh, with his firm, which you'll see later on in this show. And we, we want to spend the time with him to answer some of his questions. And Marty, we had the idea of having the viewers send in their setups or just to brag or if they needed help. But now mm-hmm. we want to take it one step further. Why don't you tell the audience exactly what we want to do to take it one step further? Well, I think what you're referring to is we want to bring people on the show, right? Is that what you're yes, referring to? Yes, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, you know, I think they've seen folks the past couple of weeks, they sit in videos showing off their setups. We had a nice one, uh, a sports-related one, um, and uh, and now this one this week uh, is from, and his name is, and, uh, oh, Joseph sent us, sent us the video. And he's, like you said, he's just getting started. It's not, he's not into media. He's not, it's not a media related company. It's a different type of business that he wants to produce media for and get out his message and everything. He's just starting up and he, today we'll show you kind of a teaser video. He sent up, he's talking about his setup and think he sent some pictures and mainly kind of setting up next week, but that's what we'd like to do. You know, not only, play videos and show you guys your your setups and maybe also if you're sending videos where you might have a specific issue that you're dealing with um that you have a question with that you want us to diagnose we can certainly try to do that but we'd love to bring you on i mean this is the whole i mean we we had the setup here where we bring people on and have that back and forth and instead of just sending two minutes spend a little bit more time get into a depth and get back and forth and then also invite people in the comments to comment kind of round table this whole thing and that's exactly the point of the of the show. So we're happy that somebody stepped forward in the beginning. So we're looking forward to the next week. And next week's a great time to do it. It's a nice follow-up to what we're going to be showing today. Yeah, it's a great way to, like Marty said, engage the community, you guys. Um, but also, we don't have all the answers. I mean, we, we, we have a bunch of answers and we can help you. But it doesn't mean our way is 100% the way you should do it. Somebody else might have a better idea that's watching the show and they can interact with the comments. So like you said, Marty, getting them on to talk with you, me and Jeff next week, it's going to be great. So look for that next week. We're going to spend the, the, the whole show. And it's some, in, in some cases, it's a great way, Marty, that, that we can spend that individual time with, with our community when they're, mm-hmm. when they, when they have questions and we can kind of get into things that, I mean, obviously there's certain lengths of troubleshooting, right? We can't do in a live show format, right. but you know, I know he has some questions about lighting, green screen, things like that. Mm-hmm. These are things that we can help address on this show. And and again, as we get into it, even if it's marketing, if we don't have the answer, we can get some folks to come in and help yeah. with that. And we're, we, we have some folks that are going to come on in the future, especially from Telestream, that have that marketing experience, that high level, been doing it most of their life. I know, Marty, you, you, you do this as a day job. Um, mm-hmm. it's going to be great to get them on. So it doesn't have to just be production only. Maybe you want to know how I can get my video out there better on social media. These are the things we, yeah. we want to cover as going forward, right? Yeah, I think one of the also one of the things that we hope to do when we bring people on is what you normally find is someone may have an issue or something they're struggling with or a question or they're setting up their studio for the first time. And many times it's a problem or an issue that, you guys out there watching may be ha- experiencing the same thing or something very similar. And at least we can cover that. It may apply and probably will apply to a lot of people in the audience or, or some variant of that. 
So, or it might spark another conversation. So say we have someone on with a particular issue and it might lead to something else, whether during that show or maybe even a future show. And like we said, I mean, it's kind of a group um, process here. And that's really the whole point, you know, we yep. call it on social and Stephen, you raise a very good point. As far as we talk a lot about technical production, we're going to talk about on camera presence and, and presenting yourself and, and some of the tips there today, but then you have to bring up the other side of it is it's a complete production, right? So the marketing side, how do I get my video out there? You know, what's the best way to promote it? Um, some of those items as well, you know, and I know we have some guests coming up that can address that, but we want to take the show and really make it a, a complete show. And right. again, a lot of these topics are going to be driven by the like, folks that are yeah. watching, like, the, like the idea that, you know, I mean, and I, the, the ideas for a lot of these shows already have come from the comments and come from you guys. So we do listen and that's why we do it. Cause you know, otherwise we don't, we don't like to hear ourselves talk. We want to do what, what you guys want to see and some of the topics you want us to cover. So it's a good start today. Good start going into, Tuesday, bringing people on. Hopefully that gives everyone kind of the impetus to to start sending their videos and hopefully be on the show as well. So before we get into some tips on professionalism on camera, one of the other things that we had gotten some great feedback on was we need some more diversity on the show. We've got a bunch of guys on here. So you ladies out there that are doing a broadcast or live stream, send in your videos. We'd love to have you come on the show and talk to us about your setup and what you're doing. This isn't just, uh, you know, a bunch of guys getting together and hanging out, you know, guy night, you know. So it was great yep. feedback that I had received earlier, and I thought, well, I'm going to put it out there to the community. So we're not discriminating against guys, but we also yep. want to see some ladies out there that are doing some projects. Send in your stuff. So we'd love to see it. So with that, yep. Marty, let's kind of dive into this uh, professionalism on camera and and tips and, and techniques and tricks, and uh, I'll let you kind of take the floor. Yes. Uh, so a couple of things, uh, we, and we've talked about some of these before in, in this show, in previous shows that Steve and I have done, and this topic always comes up quite a bit, right? So how do you present yourself? And, you know, we, we, we you know, titled the show professionalism presence on camera, which is very important. One of the reasons why I believe that it's so important that you think about this stuff is about that first impression. Right. So especially if you're just starting out and maybe you have no presence online or very little presence and you're starting a show for the first time, people are, are just tuning you in for the first time. That first impression is very. Now, we all realize that people should not judge on first impression. I mean, in, in uh, you know, an ideal world, that wouldn't happen. But unfortunately, that's how people are many times. And you have maybe 10 seconds, 30 seconds to rope, rope them in. So. You see my shot here, you know, now I'm using a green screen and there's a million different ways you can do this. But one of the things you notice what I'm doing here, just as a first impression thing is besides the even lighting is looking straight into the camera. Right. And that's probably one. And I, and I do this as a day job. So I produce live videos. I produce podcasts. And one of the things I coach people on is this type of thing where you're looking right at the camera. And that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to get used to because they're usually, their computer's usually down here and they're looking at the person that they're talking to instead of looking at the camera. And, and even if you don't have, like I have a monitor right below my camera here that I'm talking to. So it's a little easier for me. And I'm actually, I'm actually looking right at the monitor, but my camera and monitor are, are far enough away that it appears like I'm looking into the camera. I'm not really looking into the camera. So that's a little trick. Um, and it's almost like what they do with teleprompters. So when you see a news anchor look into the camera and kind of reading their script, they're looking into the camera and they use this one-way glass and they actually see their script coming up, but they look, they're look they literally looking right into the lens and that shows through. I'm gonna switch to a different shot here and show you uh, my camera angle here. So I got a camera set up and uh, in back of my PTZ camera, that camera you see right in front there that I'm pointing to,
don't get underneath. And again, just if you really want to dial it in. So you'll see, I'm looking right here. I'm, I got the camera, but the camera position is important. Training yourself to look in the camera is important. And then when I go to my main shot, it looks great because I'm looking in the camera, right? So I'm looking right there. I'm not looking down at my laptop. I'm not, even if you have a webcam, that's another thing. Now I have a you know pretty expensive PTZ camera that, P, you know full disclosure, PTZ Optics sent this to me. Um, and so I'm using this as my main studio camera. Uh, and it's not a, an expensive camera at all. It's, 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 and it's very powerful, but say if you don't have that, uh, and you're just using a webcam and I realize, and please excuse my video. I know my videos, um, uh, spottering up. Yeah. I think they said something too, issues. that the, the audio dropped out a little bit on it. I, I was able to hear you, so I don't know if it pertained to that, but thanks for that guys in there keeping that going. But yeah, I'm going to let it calm down a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, are you, can you hear my audio? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you fine. So. Okay. Okay. So excuse the video. So I'm having a little trouble with the bandwidth. So this is what happens during last show. So I'm, I don't know. My bandwidth is not working out very, very well here, but hopefully you can hear me. But even if you have a webcam, the important thing is set it up on your computer. Try to get that com uh, webcam eye level or a little above. And even if you're working off a laptop, put some books underneath. Anything you can do to get that camera up and then practice looking right into it. And then if you're working off a laptop, kind of practice looking out of the side of your eye at your guest or at the screen. And you don't, again, you don't have to look at them right away. As long as you know what's going on, you're good. But it's what you really need to zero in on is how you're coming across to the viewer. And this is like, I'm looking right into the camera. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at Steven, but it looks like I'm looking at Steven. You know, so that's, and if, and, I'll, and I'll, the other tip I'll, I'll throw out here and I'll throw it back to you, Steven, is, I would I would invite you to take a look take a look at any cable news any any cable news or any show that has panelists panel panel discussions uh, a combination of in studio guests and maybe stu uh, guests that are coming in remote the in studio guests they'll have they'll still put them in separate boxes and you'll notice the in studio guests will not be looking at the host they'll look in the camera especially when they're being um, introduced and even when they're saying their piece or they're they're, they're part of it. And, and they may switch back to that wide shot. You'll notice that they're looking at the camera, not, not the host. And, or you'll notice that they're kind of fighting it. And they have a director in the ear, and they're always looking at that camera because the director is always thinking about how does it appear to the person that's watching at home? doesn't matter what's going on in the studio. How does it appear there? So for me, that's one of my big tips. And I think that's one of the hardest things people have to get used to is, again, looking at the camera, avoiding looking at the screen because that doesn't do any good. The person looking at the screen not going to see you. Look up here, and and again, just practice that technique. I, I think it's something that's personable too. Where I I think looking into the camera, and and I do the same thing. I set the camera at eye level, just a little bit above eye level, and I tip it down, just like, just like you stated. Um, I think that's that's perfect advice. One of the other things that I do, and and if you're if you're producing your own show, kind of like what we're doing here, I'm producing, and I know Marty's adding some flair, and soon Jeff will be adding some flair. Is when you're off camera, utilize that time. Don't sit there, pick up your phone, and don't don't do this when you're off camera and look at the text messages that somebody's sending you because you missed you know uh, a response to them. Utilize that time to key up next shots in, in, in the software program you're using, like in Wirecast, cue, take the time to queue that up. Make sure that your settings are proper. So that, and, and make sure, like, if you're using, like, with the Wirecast system, you can use the X keys or whatever you're using as a, as a control board for your switcher. Make sure that your fingers are positioned right. So as you can see, I'm switching right now, but I'm still looking at the camera, and I never take my eyes off the camera when I'm switching shots. But there's no producer here doing this for me. I'm switching the shots. I'm staying low key, and it's it's natural to kind of glaze up and look up, or kind of glaze down for a brief second. Uh, even newscasters will do that when they're not reading the teleprompter. Marty, it's okay to you know let your eyes wander just a little bit, but come back to that that connection point of looking at the camera, and I think. It's just like they say, the eyes are the window to the soul, right? The same thing is with the camera. You can really relate to people, and it helps them to know that you're you're speaking to them. I mean, if I, like you said, if we were sitting here like this the whole time talking, I mean, right? it's it's funny, but 
Yeah. It's it's like these guys don't care. They don't give a rip of what what we're saying, right? Yeah. You think about your audience, right? Think about, you know, like and, and this is again, it's not something that normally comes natural at all. You know, it, it, you know, when you and and when you're watching, you know, a professional on network television, like a news reader or whatever, having a panel discussion. Those folks have been doing it for years. They they're trained. They practice that. They know all the techniques. It's like a chef, you know. All the if you know the techniques, it takes practice. And if it looks easy, it probably isn't. That's right. There's it's a reason why not. it looks easy. And 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 I think you raise a really good point. And this is a little bit more advanced part with the hardware controller and the tactile controller. And that's a great tip. You know, as you as you get along with your live show and as you put more investment into it. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more as far as one of the pieces of equipment that is really good is getting a nice hardware controller, X keys unit. If, you, if you're working with our cast, X keys works with that. And something with tactile buttons and like yeah. what you're doing, you're feeling with your, it's like playing the piano. You're feeling with, and you know exactly where those buttons are. And it's almost like touch typing where you know, and you don't have to look. And you're like, you just demonstrated that where you're switching shots and you know exactly where your fingers are. Yep. And, you and again, the other thing is you make it look easy. Do not be deceived by that. You know, you've been doing it a long time. You're very used to you you practice it and you're like a musician, really. I mean, that's that's a good analogy. And you practice your instrument and you're really good at it and you make it look easy. You, you, you do. Know? That's so, a good point. You have to practice, you know, your your button pushing if you're using a tactile controller or if you're using a, an iPad or even if you're if you're using a mouse and keyboard, you should always practice. If this is something that you're wanting to do and make it look as professional as possible, you want to get forget about all the other distractions that are around you. I mean, if you could see all the computers that are around me, I'm monitoring this and monitoring that. And there is times, Marty will tell you, uh, he can kind of read me where I he knows I'm working on something because something went down. I saw in the chat room like, uh, I don't know, Facebook went down, let's say, and I'm looking to see if I'm getting any errors and he'll carry on the show. You also have to rely on your your co-host. And, and I encourage a co-host for that reason, because if, if you don't have one and you have to tend to something else as being a solo producer, bad things can happen. And it's not always good, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, and I want to really emphasize, when you look at us doing the show, now I, I kind of have the easy job here. I'm not in Steven's shoes. Steven's producing the whole show. He's pushing the button. He's, he's concerned about what's going on in the streams. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background that, that it, it makes it look real easy because, because he's practiced and it comes over time. So when you're, if you're just starting out, you can get that. That's the fun part is you can practice, you can build, it's going to be rough in the beginning. Cause you're going to, it's like learning an instrument. You're, if you're, if you learn how to play guitar, your first, your first playing or your first song is going to be pretty rough. You know, until you learn music theory, until you learn what the cards are and where you put your fingers and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And you just practice and it becomes muscle memory. I mean, part of what you do with the show is you have it all set up where it com becomes a little bit muscle memory and you know where things are. And over time, you practice and you get better and better and better. And that's part of the part of the deal. But but again, and even like when we talk, look in the camera, all the techniques, even when we're talking on camera, you'll notice that both of us. You will not hear a lot. Hopefully, hopefully you're not hearing a lot of ums and filler words. You know, that's another, I learned this from Mark Rogers. Mark is a, is a um, on-camera professional. And if you watch his, his stuff on YouTube, he is a total pro, no filler words whatsoever. I, I strive to be there and I practice pausing. And that's another thing you practice, your presentation and just pausing instead of saying um. And people will be with you. In fact, they'll be able to find, and don't talk too fast. Slow it down, vary your pacing, and then you bring people in. And it's, and again, it's just practicing. And I would, I would recommend to folks, if you don't do a show, videotape yourself and watch yourself back. And, 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 and you're, practice. and Marty, you're going to make mistakes. Like last week, here's a prime example. If you guys want to see, I, I'm being completely transparent with this. Last week, I made a mistake. Marty was talking. And again, you get in that muscle memory phase, right? So you're on this double box, and I thought I had queued up like I normally do. I have a double box, and then I go to Marty's single shot. I thought I had it queued up to go to this shot for Marty, and I would be completely off of camera. But what in actuality happened is I went to my shot. Not even paying attention. It was completely muscle memory. So this is what I did. 
I grabbed my cup and I took a drink and everybody's probably like, oh my gosh, he just did the cardinal sin because I thought I was off camera. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on camera. And I quickly looked down at my buttons and I pushed it live to Marty. By that time, it was, it happened in a split second, but it was one of those things, Marty, where it was like you said after the show, you'll never do that again. And it, and it's absolutely right. But embrace those learning experiences. Don't sit there. Even me, I've been doing this for 12 years. I, the same yeah. type of setup. You're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. So don't, don't beat yourself up. But how do you recover from it? Well, we just kept going. And we didn't throw any attention to it until now. But we're using it as a learning experience because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big enough to say I made a mistake, right? Uh I and even reaching over yes uh, last week and I accidentally hit a button that muted the audio. We had to restart the show. It happens from time to time, but but keeping that professionalism, maintaining you know composure and not wigging out on camera. I mean I've seen some people like that's it I'm done and they you know start closing. You don't want to do that. Your audience doesn't want to see. It. They want to see that you've maintained control through the whole scenario. Yeah. It's tough to do, Marty. It really, it really is. It's a balancing act too between embracing the mistake and not bringing attention to it. So if it's something like you did, you demonstrated that with the, with the shot change, and I knew, I knew exactly what was happening because I saw the, I saw you were on your shot. I go, oh, he he didn't switch it, but I didn't draw attention to it because I knew that it would be another second or two. And you realize and you would just it. switch it and we wouldn't call attention to it. And people, a lot of people probably wouldn't even pick up on it. And you'll be surprised if you're doing your own show, you're going to be in tune with every, you're going to think every little thing. I know you're going to be super self-critical. I get it. And I'm the same way. But again, it's, I, and I'm just telling you from, from past experience, it's a balancing act between like, like, for example, during this show, the bandwidth issues that I had with my camera. Now, when it's obvious like that, I just embraced it. I just, I just let you guys know, here's what's going on. It's a live show. Can you hear my audio? Great. I'll continue because I know it's going to clear up. That's a different story because I just want to let people know what's going on. But when the, when it's just a switching error like that, that's more of a subjective subjective thing. It doesn't really matter. He could have meant to be on himself taking a drink. Who knows? If he doesn't draw attention no. to it, nobody's <laughs> gonna care. No. no, you know. But you'll know next time. Yeah. That, oh, I'm gonna make sure I, I avoid that. You know. So it's a it's a real nuanced balancing act with that stuff. So and yeah. don't let it stop you. That's I right. mean that's something that you can look at it. Be, you know, be, be honest with yourself as far as feedback, what you want to improve and then do it better next time. You know, that's something to me that just says that I have to just pay more attention and not just depend on muscle memory all the time. So it's, it's a great reminder that no matter how good that you think you've got your switching capabilities down, whether you're using mouse and keyboard, X keys, whatever you're using, take the time to preview it. Just look out of the corner of your eye, look at your preview monitor, make sure you're on the shot that you want to be on. Um, but before we show you today's uh, community send in, I guess we got to figure out a name for that. If you guys got a name yeah, for that, <laughs> let's, let's come up with segment. something. We'll, we'll, we'll call it the, the, the community send in for right now. Uh, Jeff has a few words also about this um, about this subject that we're talking about. Oh, so I want to kind of take it to you, Jeff. Thanks, guys. You know I would love to be part of the show today, but I uh, am on a college road trip, and you know this time of year that comes with the territory. So I wanted to share just a, a couple of thoughts about what it means to have great on-camera presence, and I think it really truly starts with this. At the end of the day, your on-camera presence is really your off-camera presence, but with some intentionality and some planning. And what do I mean by that? Uh, you can't be anybody else. You can watch Stephen or Marty or myself or really anybody, and you can learn some things that may help you in your uh, design of who you want to be in front of a camera. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to connecting with your audience. And for me, uh, you know, I, as a broadcast person, I really believe that is making an intentional effort to stare and focus into that camera lens, that small lens that seems so hard to do. It's not human. It seems, um, you know, very abstract. You're looking into the netherworld, but you can see how my looking into the lens really affects the conversation we're having. It makes it more connecting in many ways. And there's nothing wrong with live streamers that are busy pushing buttons and talking and thinking. You're, you know, posturing, trying to figure out what you want to say. Not a thing wrong with that. 
But when you're really wanting to make a point, you know, even filling the screen, you know, instead of being way far back, uh, you really kind of come in close and you look into that lens and you say, hey, I'm the answer to the, the problem that you've got. And here's how I can make that happen for you. Let me share some value with you on how I can move that needle forward for you. You can see, obviously, how that kind of nonverbal communication speaks to confidence. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of power uh, behind it, but it's not cocky. It's just you're who you are. And at the end of the day, I am convinced you can do this because anybody can do it with a little practice. Press play. I'll be there next week, guys. Looking forward to Owen Social next week. And until then, I want to see uh, somebody send in a video that you've actually started the process of having great on-camera presence because you're starting, and that's where you got to go. Well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, that was great insight. Marty, I think one of the big things that he touched on that we didn't touch on was the whole be yourself factor of it. And I think that was excellent advice. I think that's something nope. that everybody should take. Don't don't try to be somebody that you're not, you know? Yeah, big time. There's there's an audience for everybody, right? You know, and that's, that's the it. one thing. I mean, you could have, a, you might be in a niche and you think there's a million people and there probably are. There's a lot, of, every niche, there's always people covering that niche. Um, but you're the only one that is you. And, and I can tell you that, you know, I can tell you the things I'm interested in. You know, I like Apple products, you know, I like Disney. I like th th certain things and I'll watch, especially when it comes to YouTube or, or streaming video, I'll watch several creators in that space because yeah, some of it overlaps to a degree, but one thing that all the successful creators bring is they bring a little of themselves to it. It's something unique that they, a, a unique spin to the topic that only comes from them. And so you may think, oh, is anybody gonna like me? It's not about appealing to the audience that you wish you could appeal to, it's appealing to, to your audience, you know, and bringing those people in. And you'll attract the right people if you're just yourself. I mean, Stephen, we tell the story that we, when we met in person, it was like we just picked up where we, where we left off when we do the shows, because there was no difference mm -hmm. of us being here and us meeting in person. There was no difference in how we are, how we look, how we act. It's the same person. And I just find, and then unless you're putting on dramatic play and you're an actor, then, you know, it's, it's very hard to stay in that persona. Like you're putting on some type of act. It's not, it's not going to work long-term. So yeah. you have to, good, very, very good advice. You have to, you have to do that. So again, it was great to see Jeff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take you to Joe, who is our community video of the week. And he's going to be joining us next week. So I'm going to take you right now to that and uh, a little teaser. Is this on? Hello, Stephen and Marty. Thank you, by the way. Welcome to my humble studio. Um, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to cut to some video of what it looks like behind the scenes so you can see what the setup is like. And we can talk a little bit about what I'm going to be using this setup and the flow for for the podcast and video blogs that I do. So without further ado, let's go to the uh, behind the scenes shot. All right, let's see how this works. This is the studio. Accent lights on the wall, natural light, two LEDs with paper on them to diffuse it, and two simple can lights bouncing off the ceiling. That's it. Hey, Joe, thank you so much for sending that in. We look forward to uh, meeting with you next week. I think, Marty, that's going to be a great show to kind of go over his setup. And, Marty, I thought I had a lot of computers in front of me, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I, he's uh, he's coming close to what I'm doing. I, I love that monitor bank, bank of monitors. And I love how he, he uses the can lights 
like you, you know, you, you had a setup where you use the, you know, lights from Home Depot with the reflectors and they're very inexpensive lights. And it's a great way to get, he, like he's using it for up lighting in front of his cameras, I guess, just to light the room up and bounce it off the ceiling. But I mean, whatever, and that's another thing we've talked about, right? Whatever works, whatever works, whatever looks good, you know, and you, you'd be surprised what people come up with, you know? So it'll be interesting to see. There's, there's some things that I've already been kind of chewing over and I'm sure you've been chewing over of ways yep. that he can kind of better his setup. And, and again, he's looking for advice. And, and Joe, if I, I'm sure you're watching right now, any advice that we're giving, we're not telling you you have to do it or it's a deal breaker. Um, you're asking for advice, and we appreciate that. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. And we'll give you that advice. And it's just, you know, you do what you got to do, and obviously within your means. Uh, but there are some things that you can do that won't cost money that we're going to talk about with you next week. So, Marty, I, I'm looking forward to it, and that's going to be on Tuesday of, of next week. Yes. So short weekend, and we'll be right back on Tuesday. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be good. So I agree. It's going to be great. So, guys, at this time, we're going to wrap it up. We want to thank Mr. Marty McPadden from Podjam.tv. You can follow him on Instagram, Twitter, all those great places. Just look up Marty McPadden. You'll find him. And, and you know, let me add something real quick. You know, I have the Podjam.tv, and, and for a long time, it was a one-page website. I did add some additional content oh, there. Oh, did kind you? Of some of the things. I'm building it out, sort of what, what we do and having a proper website for the business and, and the production services that we provide. So as you go there – it'll be more than one page and, and slowly getting better. So <laughs> I don't want you to go there. And it's like, Oh, why did I go there? It's nothing there, you know? So yeah. So it's more content. It gives you a glimpse of what, what I do. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, so we're, we're looking forward to that. And so again, guys, you guys can follow me. I'm pretty much the tech buzz everywhere. You can go find me on friend me on uh, Facebook. Happy to oblige. Um, I'm all in these other groups and I know Marty is with the broadcasting. So, Make sure you head over there and come back Tuesday. I'm looking forward to speaking with Joe. I think it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great opportunity to really connect with community members. Send in your videos, Stephen H. at Telstream.net. You can see my name right there. It's not a secret. Stephen H. at Telstream.net. Send me your videos, and I'll make sure that Marty and Jeff get them, and we'll look them over before the show, and we'll get you guys on the show. We'd love to have you on the show. And ladies out there, if you have a show and you want to show us what you got bring it the more the merrier so we'll see you guys tuesday have a great weekend uh if we don't talk to you till then and uh it's been great hanging out we'll see you guys later